busy. <laughs> staying busy means if I had a kid, I want them to be busy all the time. That means they aren't doing anything dangerous. Not bothering you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No drugs, no drinking. It's like when I take my dog outside and like make her run around a lot. That way, when she comes back in, she's tired and doesn't bother me. That's how the equivalent of my parents were with like high school me. Oh, do you really Keep want them super that? busy? And then you want fall your kids. You want your kids to not do drugs or drink at all. Not until, until college. They're... Okay. In college, knock yourself out. My job is to get you out of the door. Well, no, no, don't like, knock what? yourself out. I mean, that's... <laughs> no, that's heroin. Yeah, there you go. No, I don't... Yeah, oh, no. no. I imagine my parents thinking, just get him out the door successfully. Yeah. Get him into a college, and he'll be fine. Um, hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? What time is it? It's time to talk about death and taxes. Fantastic. <laughs> Guys, welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes, the only show on the internet hosted by us where we talk about the two things that Benjamin Franklin said were inevitable in life, death and taxes. My name is Noah Chrysler. I don't know many things about the legal system, uh, which is in stark contrast to James and Stephen, who know many things about the legal system. And that's the dynamic of the show. Guys, can you introduce yourselves? My name is James Champlin. I'm an attorney, and I know at least three things about the law. <laughs> You guess. <laughs> Fantastic. I said at least. <laughs> my hey, my name is Stephen Schreiber. I'm uh, also an attorney. I'm uh, we own Modern Estate Planning, the uh, a firm that does estate planning work and helps people get their stuff together and protect their families. Also, I know four things about the law. <laughs> Won't tell you which. <laughs> See, the difference is I said at least three, so it could be more minimum three. three. It could be as many as ten. I definitely know four <laughs> things. I can guarantee mm -hmm. you four. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's 20. Maybe it's not. Okay, yeah. so number one, can't murder people. <laughs> no, murder bad. Murder's bad without justification. Is that day one of law school? <laughs> uh, murder bad. Uh, general, that's a general like, that's an rule, you shouldn't kill okay. people. Yeah. Uh, the LSATs mostly helped me in, like, dinner parties. It's like yeah. the two I've ever thrown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy can't sit next to Barbara. So-and-so can't sit next there. Mm. There has to be two empty mm. seats across there. Oh, like the logic questions? Yeah. Legal thing number two, it's not slander <laughs> if it's true. Yep. Right. Legal thing number three. This is one way to help. It's a great way to help. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, it's like, uh, thank, thank you, Governor Perry, for um, naming the three departments that you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> the Department of Defense. Look, I can one. start yeah. naming off legal things that are funny, okay? I just not, had a moment where I couldn't think of a funny one. Stop. Not being able to name the department that you became the secretary of. Okay. <laughs> On this show, we talk about, uh, you know, death and taxes and all of that. It isn't an, an, we typically talk about estate planning and, like, probate stuff, um, basically stuff uh, re regarding end-of-life preparation and death. Um, we – this uh, – here's something you need to know. So listen in. Get on close. <laughs> this come, is really come, important. Come, come close. Yeah. This is not legal advice. That is that is what we need to say at the top here and the, what uh -uh. you need to understand. This is infotainment. And he knows where you live. Not. No. No. <laughs> no, no. Not no. saying that. No. I no, 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 no that was a oh. joke. It, it was just a joke. With the, I mean – uh, Come close. <laughs> Come close. <laughs> yeah. um, no, if you guys would like legal advice, or would you like uh, you would like help with planning your estate, making a will, making a trust, doing a probate issue, um, we would love to help with that. We yes. are based in Atlanta, Georgia, but anywhere else in the United States too. Give us a call; we can refer you to somebody local. Um, but yeah, our number is four zero four nine three nine seven five six two. If you'd like to specifically make an estate plan, we would love to help you do that. Um, we'll also help with other stuff too. That is when. This advice turns into legal advice is after you call us and call talk us. to an attorney. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And before that, it is don't don't act on it because that would not be don't take advice just based on what you saw on the internet, right? No. Please, which is no. usually good information. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah, except like YouTube it's, tutorials. It's for education, most but definitely don't take it as a. Um, I mean, you know, if we say solution. something and you're like, you know, that's something I hadn't thought of before, and you think you need to do something, you know, go talk to a lawyer about yeah. it. Love yeah, exactly. That. Love that. Um, Unless for some reason you do ask me a question directly, then maybe it will apply to you. Yeah, we'll see. That's true. Um, yeah, if you would like to ask a question to be answered on the show, uh, you can email us at questions at let's talk about death and taxes dot com, or you can also just reach out to us in general, info at modern estate planning dot com. You can also visit me at my home. My address is. <laughs> <laughs> I live at work, so you can come to our office at 1100 Peachtree Street, Northeast Suite 200. No, sorry, Suite 950. We used to be at 200. Yeah. Atlanta, Georgia, 30309. Yeah, come visit the office. It's really nice. Except make an appointment, or else we'll find yeah, don't, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make yeah. an appointment between 9 and 5. <laughs> Give us the heads up, and yeah. we will happily. Um, Bring your mask. 
Yes. Fantastic. This episode is all about step parents and step children. Um, Mm -hmm. And specifically through the lens of estate planning, um, which I don't know much about. So if you guys just had to give like a quick, concise two minutes on things that step parents and step children should think in regards to estate planning, what should that two minutes be about? I would make a plan to make sure that both your for a person who is on their second marriage or whatever, whatever, subsequent marriage or relationship and they have children from prior relationships to make a plan to not have your spouse and your children sue each other in probate court and to have a, mm-hmm. if you want to benefit both of them to have an, to make a plan that accommodates everyone on it. And honestly, if you don't want to benefit one of them, also make a plan that makes that explicit as well. Have you seen many probate cases between step parents and step That's like 80% of probate <laughs> yeah, cases. That's so many cases. <laughs> Honestly, I can't think of a yeah. case where. Uh, okay, so without step parents and step children fighting in probate court, the probate practice would be dramatically reduced. Really? Absolutely. Why? Like, Absolutely. Cases that, yeah, for, and, yeah, and, and we for do, plans. And we do get plenty of cases as well where people are doing a will and they're specifically treating their stepchildren as children in the will. So, so it's not all negative, but, no, no, yeah. but the negative step, ones are the yeah. bulk of the, it's almost always, the cases yeah, we get. The stepfather, stepmother versus the stepchildren is a killer case. Yeah. People, people rarely have the same animosity towards their own siblings, towards their mm-hmm. own parents, towards other things. Yeah. But, um, because it also the, the best part of not the best part the the danger part about the the worst part about it is that that case is built over already pre existing tension mm-hmm. right and then you add in the fuel of what uh, did this person want to do yep you add in the fuel of of death and money and it now just, fighting for almost by proxy yeah. which one loved us more right a lot of these cases you know when there's not a plan a lot of these kind of tensions underlying the relationships going to get brought to the front and this is almost like a proxy war right where exactly. it turns in this big long out long drawn out expensive legal battle yeah over it, just a lack of communication yeah. the, wow, that's, that's several awful. times the cost of an estate plan Ooh, yeah. so yeah so so if you had to you know ballpark the cost of a probate matter like versus like an estate plan what are, what are you kind of looking at could okay. you do that or so uh, without raw money it but like I say, let's say an elaborate estate plan Anywhere from like fifteen hundred to ten thousand dollars, depending on lots and lots of variables. Yeah, right. Um, uh, probate litigation, if you hire a lawyer, is between both sides between like five thousand and maybe a hundred thousand, depending wow. on how far into right. it you go. Because wow. you're not just paying, you know. Eventually, you know, it, it, there's both fees coming in from from both sides. Yeah, and also you might end up you having to do depositions, um, discovery, mm-hmm. all these things that if your relationship were fraught. Before they're going to be completely burned to right. a, um, tinder ashes or whatever by this um, mm-hmm. case. Yeah, because um, they're going to be dealing with it in the wake of a of a death. Of a death. Right. So you start with the death right. of the person who kept these people tied together. Right. And now they're not tied together, and now you have mm-hmm. there's no buffer between going at it. Yeah. Jesus. Um, that's pretty wild. And, and it's, it's also weird because a spouse, a spouse that's married to that decedent for like a day has many rights so if your mom let's say your mom marries the pool boy and then your mom passes now that pool boy inherits the stuff he has a chance he, he's entitled mm-hmm. to a, a share, a under a share George not George. all of it but uh, if there's no planning and, and she may want to leave him something but right. maybe not half of it or right. mm-hmm. whatever the number turns is out it, to be is it a third right now it's a it's okay if there's one yeah. child it's half if there's two or more children it's a yeah. third so yeah. we'll, we'll get into that because anyway, most yeah. of the questions but, are about um, yeah. but okay so lots, it's, it's, the, it's, it's usually it's cheaper fuel. it's usually cheaper to preemptively plan though I would yeah. say it's almost always, almost cheaper. always cheaper it's almost always cheaper and not just in money but the emotional bandwidth that gets exerted Absolutely. and you can you can almost about 80% of the cases in the probate court I mean that's, that's obviously a, that's not a hard statistic hard to put it hard to put a percentage I can't on it, but a lot. The vast majority of cases that come by, people call me about probate. It's because their step parent or stepchild did something and they want right. to exact it out. Yeah. But I'll say it's definitely the majority. No, and that's very real. And at various and think, months, it might be almost all the calls. Yeah. So. Cool. 
Sweet. So I think this is a very pressing issue for us to talk about. I'm going to like to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, sweet. So let's get into it. We're going to jump into this first question from Avo.com. For those of you who don't know, Avo.com is like the Yahoo Answers of legal advice on the internet, answered by lawyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to pull some questions from there. Sometimes they're really bad, um, but I tried to pick some ones that weren't terrible. It's a general public, and it's... Great. Steven, <laughs> dis- want, Steven once described Avo.com as walking into the grocery store and eating free grapes from the counter. And yes. I think that that's the perfect way. That, that is, is a pretty, pretty good descriptor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like, it's not, you're not going to get filled and, up, and, but also and it's it might not be more than dirty. the grape. It might be literally like sitting there like opening a box of cereal and like <laughs> getting a bowl and pouring the milk in and like really settling in. I love that. We love Avo.com. Here we go. <clears throat> Can I inherit my house? My husband died without a will. <laughs> Sorry. Can you really say that? Because really the emphasis made sure. me laugh. Can. Yeah. Um, can I inherit my house? My husband died without a will. We were married for 40 years and have no children together. I understand that I am considered the sole survivor of our house. My name is on the deed. He has two kids that are not mine. Thanks for any help. So... He's got two kids that are not hers. They've been married for 40 years, and they have mm-hmm. no children together. So she's nervous that um, you know, he, the, the house is just going to go directly to the well, kids. Did he have a will in that thing? Um, I don't mentioned? think he did. Okay. So it's going to depend on a couple of things. You know, First, okay. it's going to depend on how the will is titled. Or the deed. The de- excuse me, deeded. Um, if, if it's done as a joint tenancy with right of survivorship, then it doesn't matter. It goes straight to her. Right? Which assuming basically, she's the joint whoever, so whoever's the last fancy one to thing. Live. That's yeah. fancy thing mm-hmm. that means there's two people on the D. It's gonna be two yeah. or more, but yeah, I'd say okay. two or more. Yep. Okay. And so you know your 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 baseline, right? Your your default joint ownership, right? Is you know I own fifty percent, Stephen owns fifty percent. If I die, my fifty percent goes to my heirs. Gotcha. But which could this, be different than the other person's heirs. Right. Yeah. With this, um, with joint tenancy with right of survivorship. If I die, my 50% goes to Steven. Yep. Gotcha. Immediately. Okay. doesn't go through probate. just goes to Steven. It's Steven's. automatically. It's his. It's automatic. The, go- the, one, the goal is to live longest, even by like a second. Right. Um. Well, it's, well the, the second's I agree with. But to outlive them by hopefully a meaningful amount of time to make it legally clear. Mm-hmm. But your goal is to outlive them. Yeah. Gotcha. So mm-hmm. married couples will often use that because that way the house just goes straight to the spouse. Yeah. And yeah. And you don't worry about it. Right? Essentially, buy the house together, mm-hmm. which um, is... If it was which not... Which might be in this scenario. I think... I'm assuming it's not. If it's not... That's why, she, why she's asking. There's also... We call it this. tenancy in common and be yeah. the two halves. So it's going to get... Um, it's going to depend on a lot of factors, right? Um, did the house... Did he own the house before they got married or was it only they bought together? Yeah. Um, how How is it deeded? Um, you know, if it was deeded only in his name, that's going to be just stuff you're going to have to deal It'll with. Just be his house. Let's say, let's say he purchased the house before they got together, and it is only in his name. Then it's all part of his estate. Then it's all part of his estate. Now, as the spouse, she is going to be so in Georgia, right? There's two kids that are his. Um, she would get uh, one third of the estate to start. Yep. And then each the kid would also two-thirds. get a third. Now there are mechanisms that a surviving spouse can use. Yes. Um, in Georgia, we have a uh, petition for years support. And we're the only state that has it, I believe. And that's where the spouse can actually file something to ask for certain assets to to support themselves during that first year after the death. Yeah. Um, and that's often where you see requests being made for, like, the residential home. And there's there's no limit to how much you can ask for your right. support unless the, someone else objects to lower it. Right. Okay. Yes. So I can ask for all their money for a year of support in their in the property, and the court may grant it if no one else objects to it. Yeah. So if if the house is is just in his name and he had it before they were married and and all this, you know, she could be walking into a situation where a lot of the ownership in the house would be going to other people, and that is something she's going to have to. Yeah. Get an attorney to and work. If he around. had a, yeah. he, and he may have had a will that yeah. left it to her. It could have left it to a trust. It could have left it straight to the kids. It could have left it to someone completely different. Maybe mm-hmm. he had another. I don't know. He could have had a mistress, yeah. or left it to the humane society, or any number of things that he could have. Yeah. Gotcha. Theoretically and, done. And another thing that'll probably happen is they'll look at the estate as a whole, 
and if so say this person also had money in bank accounts right right well then maybe the the kids would get money out of the bank accounts yeah, and she, she would get the house say for like life gotcha. insurance right. and retirement accounts so and, let me yeah. let me kind of summarize here so best case scenario uh they, well for who it's just hard to right. say so hold on so let me say so so let's say best case scenario for her right oh, yeah. is that they jointly own the house together her name's on the deed and she had ch- sole oh, survivorship. survivorship she had yeah Sorry. Joint tenancy. Joint tenancy. With right. With right to survivorship. Oh, yeah. survivorship. So oh, she'll want to pull. So this close. one of the things where she want to. She can literally pull up the deed. And in yeah. Georgia, the most states of language, it would say <clears throat> Bob and Sally. Sally. Yeah. Uh, they would say as joint tenants with right of survivorship and not as tenants in common. Sweet. There's yeah. like, kind of like some magic words that one could look for yeah. in a deed that would say that. So that's Th- that's best case. That's for her. best case scenario for her. The worst yeah. case scenario for her is potentially she th- like she's not on the deed. She's not in the will. Uh, there is no will. The worst case scenario. She has to split it three ways after going through a long probate. Yeah. See, there are some other worst case scenarios. He could have added one of his children to the deed, and if he could, he could have owned the house by himself, and he could have deeded yeah. it to one of his kids with survivorship. Ooh. That's the worst scenario. Actual worst case scenario would be if this person is saying husband, but they mean common law marriage, and Oof. they're in a state that doesn't recognize common law marriage, like most states. Yeah, and then they're just a stranger and they get nothing. And the house that's and terrible. the property is not jointly titled. You can jointly title yeah. property with strangers, and yeah. that's fine. Well, legal strangers. Yeah. Um. But here's some worst case scenarios. Or actual stranger, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> let's confine this to let's confine this to <laughs> right, like, right, right. What we assume is is probably <clears throat> I think yeah, they're married. But, but, he, so, he could, he, but he could have jointly titled it to another to one of his to his kids, for example, which right. happens sometimes with older with people who are wanting to leave it to a specific person. He could have mm-hmm. left his retire his bank accounts like that all to his kids. Yeah. Um, okay. He could have emptied her out if uh, yeah, if he wanted. That's to. her worst case scenario. So because even without a because even if he left it in his name. Mm-hmm. She could still ask for your support if it's in Georgia, even yep. if he willed it to all everyone else. She's still allowed to make that claim to get the property. Yep. So it's worth that he left it to everyone else jointly. I would say. So basically, she's she's really entitled to probably not. She's not guaranteed the house, and so she it no. would not be a bad idea. She needs to look at the paperwork. Yeah, she yeah. has yeah. to get she has yeah. to get a lawyer and look at the paperwork. Yeah. yeah, like that's one where you definitely need a lawyer. Gotcha. Cool. So I the think lawyer we hopefully that. Could, yeah the lawyer would tell at least where she stands. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Um, cool. This next thing is more of a topic, really. Um, it's just the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. Have you guys seen this movie? It's really good. No. Yeah. Is that a Will Smith movie? Did I make this up? That's one of it my is, It is a Will ever. Smith movie. Yes. Yeah, okay. it it's amazing. It's so good. It's a great movie. Okay. It's a great movie. I guess I have to watch it. it. It's so good. Um, you know, it's kind of a dreary, capitalistic tale about how you know being poor in this country is like. Is that that? Uh, in the, or the curse. guy becomes like a <laughs> rich, uh, like a stockbroker yes. or something. Okay. Yes. So let me read the plot synopsis here. I stole it from Wikipedia, so it's a little bit long. Actually, I stole it from IMDb. So shout out to IMDb. Thank you. Maybe we should cut that part out. IMDb.com <laughs> for all your movie trivia needs. Who's that guy who plays that dude? IMDb.com from 1987. <laughs> Get lost for an hour looking into obscure. Career was the extra in Die Hard that yeah. with that background whatever <laughs> the <laughs> bad guy does a credit <laughs> <laughs> cool um, the pursuit of happiness based on a true story about a nam- man named Christopher Gardner Gardner has invested heavily in a device known as the bone density scanner he feels like he has made um, he has made it selling these devices however they do not sell well as they are marginally better than the X-ray with a much higher price tag as Gardner works to make ends meet his wife leaves him and he loses his apartment forced to live out on the streets with his son. Gardner continues to sell bone density scanners while concurrently taking on an unpaid internship as a stockbroker with slim chances for advancement to a paid position. Before he can receive pay, he needs to outshine the competition through six months of training and sell his devices to stay afloat. Um, and the movie is about how he kind of raises his son like in and out of homeless shelters. While and this is to... where it was Will Smith with his with his actual son yeah, Jay, playing Jay, his son. Yeah. 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 Wow, it. that movie's depressing. Oh, but it's so about good. Cap- it's, I mean, the, the capitalism I mean, it's, part. It's right. really well done, but it's just, yeah. It's yeah, just it's, like, it's brutal. Steven, you gotta watch it. Oh, yeah, we're gonna kick off the trailer. But, like, it, real sad. Real sad. Real emotional. Yeah. I mean, happy ending. And yeah. We're, we're, spoiler alert. Spoiler a alert. Major spoiler. Happy for ending. Movie, for the movie. Uh, the Pursuit of Happiness, so this is your warning. It seems like the name should hopefully leave me assuming that there's happiness accomplished. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Bootstraps don't work. <laughs> well, in this film, they happened to work. Yeah, and it's so rare that, that when it happens, they made a movie it. about it exactly. with Will Smith. Yes, it, 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 this is why we, uh, this 
partisan politics. It, it's a great narrative, probably to show why republic that makes Republicans mm-hmm. feel good about themselves for coming right. out of safety yep. net. Yep. Look right. at how much accomplishment he feels. Instead right. of just, it would have been so much easier if he had daycare for his son while he did shit. That's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, that's a big, that is a major mm-hmm. plot point mm-hmm. in the film where mm-hmm. it's like his life is literally almost Hell. virtually impossible. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And fortunately, um, he's a man. If it was a woman, it would have been a, I don't think it would have happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So, yeah, I think it's more of a testament to the ineffectiveness of the system that we live in for people who are poor, which fucking sucks. I'm sorry for saying black. that. Burn it. <laughs> burn it down. Eat the rich. <laughs> Eat the rich. Where's my pitchfork? I never have it when I need it. Um, cool. Anyway, though, so, cool. Spoiler alert. At the end of this film, Chris Gardner lands the job. He goes on to become a multimillionaire as a stockbroker. Um my first question here is since Chris is still married I, and I, I think I, this, I don't think this is like totally factually correct but but we, let's assume we can make an assumption. let's embellish a little bit um, since Chris is still married when he passes away if he doesn't create an estate plan who inherits his fortune his, his wife still is the heir wife. in most yep. states mm-hmm. um, there could be a way where can, he, he can he would have to file something to cut his wife off so yeah so let's say he doesn't have a will so so he has no plan he has, he has no plan he gets hit he, by a bus he, no he gets plan. hit by a bus and he has 10 million dollars who gets the 10 million dollars it would probably be split between the wife and the son yep really yes even though she hasn't talked to him in 30 years legally True. they are still married i mean she probably wouldn't get your support in georgia because she hasn't really lied in them for right. anything but she'd probably still get her half if he has no other kids yep. unless he felt yeah Unless, some, unless they have a prenup we don't know about, which I'd be shocked by. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, we've talked about before, right? But I, that's always, like, I think some people are not surprised, but, like, you know, I mean, I think that that's something that we should touch on, right? Which is, like, if you do nothing, if you do, if you get married and you just, and even if you go separate ways, you know, mm-hmm. if it's not, div- like, if you don't yeah. get a divorce and you don't have an estate plan, yeah. your spouse gets at least a portion of your of your yeah. that is true and, and it's pretty common for not surprisingly common that people don't get divorced pretty in bad economies or whatever you just move apart mm-hmm. and you I go on so, but that's, that's and, fairly com- it's, it's common enough where i see it in cases and yeah. it is something that i've seen happen to um like i saw this a lot when i was a public defender you know people would break up and they didn't have the money to get divorced they didn't have the, file the, court the filing fees yeah um, and, and they didn't really know about the mechanisms you can use to, to get some of those waived or make it doable. If you are in a position where you, where you are divorced or you want to be divorced but you can't afford to do it right now, at the very least, you know, get, Con- get a cheap will. Get mm-hmm. a cheap will. And there are resources too. Also contact yep. like a legal aid or ask mm-hmm. the court clerk if you can get a filing fee waiver or whatever standard paperwork. Right. But at least get a will. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's my next question is if he did have a will, right, does the will supersede the marriage? It depends on the state. So the will, mm-hmm. the, the will does not divorce you, okay. um, but in your, in you, but you can leave the estate to someone other than your spouse in the will. Mm-hmm. Um, so like his son. Yeah, but some several states, maybe most states have spousal shares that no matter what level you c- you can't disinherit your spouse beyond a certain percentage. Um, so some states say you c- your spouse still gets a third no matter what your will says, or some percentage. Um, so that unless the spouse agrees to waive their share, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool. Georgia okay. does not, but now, Georgia has your support, so if, it's a whole. If he had thing. a will before he got married, right, and then he got married, that will is now invalid, that's, unless that's, it was I, written a very specific yeah, way. Yeah, that varies. It's definitely invalid vis-a-vis her. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the other the other gifts may still be valid, but she still gets her third. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. So basically, the moral of the story is either get well, divorced. Have to up. If, if you're not planning on doing an estate plan, which everybody should make an estate plan, but if you're going to be like, no, that's not for me. I'd rather just go fast and loose with it. Number one, if you're going to do nothing, at least make sure you get divorced, right? If you want your Yeah, divorce, separation, do something. Yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and number two, uh, you know, if you're a rational adult, make an estate plan so that, like, you know, this is at least somewhat solid. Yeah. So that yeah. Bad doesn't happen. If you have enough assets to be concerned about, I would say talk to get get the divorce finalized. Even if you don't need an attorney, even if it's super simple. You've already separated all your stuff. You don't have kids together. Mm-hmm. I was say in Georgia where I practice, I know most of the most there's resources like fill in the blank legal forms for very very simple divorces that you should take advantage of mm-hmm. and a lot of the clerks in most major counties like Atlanta will waive the court fees if you can 
at sign affidavit stating that your income is below a certain level. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, let's assume. So don't quarantine with your terrible spouse. Is the moral <laughs> of that story? You can you can get that filing done. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so if Chris gets a divorce from his wife, um, and then he remarries someone else, right? Now he does a really new, good divorce attorney because that wife may try to get half that. Really? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Really. So if he doesn't, so if he, that's a really good point. So if he made if the he, money while he was still married. Yeah. Then she might be entitled to half of that money. She could, she'll, she'll certainly try. In the divorce, wow. yeah. Potentially. She's, she would certainly try to get a portion of that in the divorce. That's yeah. crazy. So that, now you have a million dollars, get a good divorce yeah. attorney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever so that money is. if you are about to come into a lot of money and you are still married Consider and you want a divorce, divorce. Follow the divorce, hopefully while you're broke. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a great piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's assume, though, let's assume that she's really nice. She didn't want any of the money, right? And she just like, was, or, or maybe he got a divorce while he's broke and then he <laughs> remarried sure he remarried when he had all this cash mm -hmm. um he still doesn't make an estate plan right so now he's got um a wife and a son um mm -hmm. and same he problem. passes away with no estate plan same what problem. happens what happens to the money the, as long as he has one kid in most states it would be split between the wife and the son and george would be 50 50 but i'm sure most yeah. states are similar and the ex-wife would not be involved in the probate process yeah right that would be taken care of in in divorce court and family court yeah um, but for the probate process the ex-wife would not with, have anything to do with it with the caveat that um, assuming that all the assets were just in his name anything with like a beneficiary would go straight to that person like his life insurance right. and bank if he has a survivor in his bank account and stuff like that yeah cool. so if he forgot to update the beneficiary on some policies and hopefully he, uh, that could be problematic and I assume based on this that if he his son's eventually over 18 he's probably gonna make the son the beneficiary I doubt he's in that much touch with his ex-wife <laughs> Or yeah. any, or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because you know we've talked before a lot about life insurance, right? Life insurance is not a part of your estate plan. Typically That's a not. common misconception, right? Yeah. Like people think like, oh, this will be handled by my will. That is not true. Mm -hmm. A life insurance policy is, is a third party contract between you and someone else between you the company and that beneficiary, and beneficiary. Yep. yeah and unless you update that like not associated with your will uh mm -hmm. then that person still gets that money check yeah. for most part yeah and, and you know life insurance is a part of estate planning mm -hmm. um it's just not right. controlled by the just by the will yeah right. there's, there's a way to provide cash to something yeah. right fairly quickly relatively yeah. cool F by quickly i mean within a couple of months or long it takes to process a claim yeah <laughs> Um, this last one's just a fun hypothetical. <laughs> Not really fun, but more of like a hypothetical. No, but you yeah. should, um, should really get a – second marriage, really consider a prenup. The yeah. first one you get a pass on after you get a divorce and get remarried. Yeah, you've learned your lesson. Yes. Now now I'm blaming you for this <laughs> mess. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on you more. Right? What <laughs> yeah. is that? Eight, 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 Fool me, yeah. Well, fool me twice, you don't. You, you can't, don't fool, you me can't twice. fool me twice. <laughs> you can't th fool me again. That's what it was, right? That's the George Bush quote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love it. Um, cool. Little fun hypothetical, not super fun. Um, but assuming you lose your job and your checking and savings account, they just zero out. Um, you have to start your life over. Uh, living in homeless shelters. Uh, what's your game plan? My game plan is to move mm -hmm. to a state with better weather and maybe a better social <laughs> yeah. safety net. Yeah. Like I'm thinking maybe San Diego or mm -hmm. um, Florida. No. No. Uh, no. Florida it's has hot. no. Florida. Florida is full of Republicans oh, and yeah. mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both, both things that don't make a, it conducive to <laughs> me being thrilled with what's going to happen. All right. Like, worst case so you're going to San Diego. Because I'm in San Diego. The worst case scenario, if I can't if I can't get into a shelter, I can just chill outside and it'd be okay. Yeah. I can at least read a book on the beach or something, and um. I don't want to be in a place where like, I was. In, I would visit other cities that have like bad winters. Like you see the homeless people have to go to the like, libraries and things during the day because yeah. the weather awesome. sucks outside. I want to be somewhere where the weather's nice outside. Yeah. So that's my homeless plan is to move to the San Diego. If I, I don't think have they to, choose, I don't think I will. Hor I well, will you said it's I'll a hypothetical, so in hypothetical, hypothetical scenario, Stephen is choosing. My hypothetical scenario: to to I'm gonna to do what it takes to get to gotcha, San Diego. Yeah. Okay. Whether I have to like sneak on the back of a greyhound or yeah. whatever, um, mm -hmm. and hitchhike, hitchhike, ride the rails, ride the rails. That'd be yep. fun. Oh, I've always wanted to. Do oh, that. Also, hobo the rail. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll get us uh, get ride the rails. Maybe. maybe I maybe. think I would probably want to go. Pacific Northwest, maybe, because I feel like the weather there is pretty mild. Yeah. Um, Portland, Plan B, I think. Yeah, and I mean they're they're pretty 
you know, helpful. And then ultimately I can kind of make that decision on like, do I want to just like get like a, a decent amount of like, like, like a base level and then just, you know, go live in the woods. Yeah. That's, that's, right? I don't think that's I like, that like this really is like, okay, we're just doing a full reset. Yeah. Everything is gone. Yeah. Right. Everything I care about, all, all of my ties are gone. What do you do? I'm really going to consider just like, Going like to live in the back woods. to nature. I feel like I've like, man. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I have a eat, similar though? thing. Because like, probably it's like, will I learn how to farm it. and, and you cook it? Learn how to farm and hunt, or will I just be a beach bum? And I, that's a debate <laughs> that I would have if I was in that scenario. Do I just want to chill? <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And just make enough, no. just make enough money every day to buy some beer and does it hang out? I would. Yeah. No, I'd probably like you know maybe find someone. Or yeah. I can learn how to for. If I can rebuild a farm, learn to hunt and forage. But learn to hunt using like traps. I would get back on the grid though. Okay, if I did well, that, I'm sorry. That I, is cause, 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 wild. Cause that would be crazy. Because yeah. if I have my smartphone, well, that's like the basis of a YouTube so comeback. But if yeah. I'm using a, if you're look, if you're if you're trying to hunt for like long term, you can't use a gun because that's going to bring attention to where you're illegally living in the woods. But maybe land is so traps. cheap out there. You could probably do it on. I mean, federal land it is technically a crime, but it's probably not a crime that they that they typically don't. I'm not gonna based risk on the it. Bundys and other. Also, you have to, to buy you have to buy ammo for the weapon. And yes, that becomes that's yeah, a, that's, that's a, a resource you have to keep track of. Whereas, like, like you can make a trap just with some sticks and rocks. You can, some, you can probably lift some traps, maybe some natural poisons or things. Yeah, or, somewhere with a stream where you can just do some like you know low key fishing. You could probably you could probably though eventually get a like a land has to be cheap in some of these places. This is so where you depressing. Could probably like I just realized how depressing. You could probably like sublease a homestead or whatever equivalent of one step above sharecropping, where you could probably just like get like a farm. Yeah. You know, just get, permi- actually, get permission from someone to live on their property and then just you know you'll say, like, all crop. right, I'll I'll keep an eye out for trespassers. Exactly. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll shoot I'll, I'll shoot the bears or something. I'll get the I'll get the bears. Well, you don't want to shoot the you bears. Can't shoot the bears. That's you want to you want to shoot the hogs. What? They're the invasive species. Real? Oh, you're, you're right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, like, I if I was going to go to South Georgia and try to just, like, be a South Georgia – well, that's not really a mountain man, but, like, go be a South Georgia live in the woods guy, I would find somebody with a really big pine farm, and I would just live in there. Yeah. And um, I would just make sure I always had an up-to-date hunting license because if you have an up-to-date hunting license and you do all that right, you can, yeah. there's no season on boar. So I True. could just live off of boar. And there's the farmers – in South Georgia? Yes. That's so, cool. Yeah, wild hogs. It, it goes back to like well, the Spanish. Uh, uh, boar back, might lot, not be the A lot right of those word, go back to like the Spanish conquest. Mm-hmm. They brought boars with oh, them and, and they went native. They're dangerous. Or they went feral, rather. That's awesome. Because yeah. they would regret. Because you could take like a regular pig yeah. and put it in nature, and a few generations will start That'd regressing back and having the ho- yeah. giant horns and the things. Yeah, they got that's big awesome. It'll de domesticate. I think that's going feral. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So, but they're a nuisance species. So. Because they're they they they're from Africa. They're from New York. They're from Europe. They're not right. from the yeah. West. So I would live on the pine farm. And you'd eat and more. And I would, yeah, I would just have an arrangement with the owner <laughs> of the pine farm. Because, like, they, you know, somebody living on their land, as long as you're being responsible, yeah, it's, it's, what do they care, right? Yeah, they're yeah. not out there farming. They'll, they're probably just, they're waiting, they'll probably make an agreement with you. that you They're get waiting the, for trees to grow. Isn't it depressing that, like, we have to come up with these, like, crazy, like, mountain men Honestly, these aren't that because, crazy like, in some ways. We're like, I could probably make this work. I'm a hard no, worker. No, I know, but, like, <laughs> well, it's not a it's fun answer sad. for me to say no, that I'm going to try to find a job as a lawyer because I have a law degree. I would right? not. Okay, if That's I would, boring. If, if That's I was not good out, I've been a lawyer. I have some other things to do if I'm if I'm starting. Like now, I want to be homeless. Yeah, now you're just asking like if you could. I would be like a hipster wood maker or something. I would like probably. That's a lot of tool investment. That's true. Uh, You have to work for someone for. You'd have to like intern like 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 that dude. Try to find an apprenticeship somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. For free, honestly, if we're living enough nature during the day and just learning a skill and stuff like that, you could probably put something together. Or maybe like go be a ranch hand somewhere. Because honestly, my because my goal would be to learn a skill that could flip around and sell expensive stuff to hipsters <laughs> or like people in mm-hmm. cities who will mm-hmm. buy fancy shit that something where it's like i could do this for myself and use it to like live right like a good skill but then like when i get to a point where i'm comfortable with my basic needs you i can, can monetize, monetize, monetize it there yeah. you go and that would probably youtube video the whole thing because <laughs> it would be a hell of a channel that people would be interested in learning how like the tame yeah. little part of first, nature first investment 
solar phone charger. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like an iPod Touch because you don't have to pay for a data plan. You can use free Wi-Fi. But you have to go to libraries or local yeah, things you to like you don't need a, data. You don't need a, a data plan for an iPhone. You can use oh, an really? iPhone without a data oh, plan. That's true. Yeah, it's, that's just, it's an iPod Touch. I'll just find some of the public internet point. and then yeah. I have to go to town and use the public wife library or something and yeah. like get it up. I think one thing people don't consider. I'm thinking like, this a little bit too more serious. You'd want to use an Android <laughs> device because more of them allow you to use an SD card. Oh, so you can put it on the SD card. That's true. You have to use that get it device yeah Yeah. use it to get i've thought about this more i think about this more like that's i could seriously do this if i had to it would suck just from making tons and tons of youtube videos though that's a no offense guys but like homeless is not a great time to be like oh i'm gonna like make it on youtube that's not the point the point is not to monetize it the point is to log it yeah so that later on when people go back at your yeah but the videos that you're making are very different from the good like primal living YouTubes that are out there True. and very successful. Like the best ones, they set up their, their phone or camera on a tripod. Yeah, there's no talking. There's no talking. I've there's seen no primitive music. technology. There's no if I had to production make, if I just, and it's beautiful. If I there just, is a lot of production. Yeah. There is Those videos are extremely difficult to make. If I had to nah. start over, I would Don't want Don't buy it. <laughs> James, do you know the editing that goes into those? AI is not good. And these videos <laughs> are not produced very well. I want to see you make okay. one of these videos. Now I'm about to watch a fight happen. <laughs> James yeah. is trolling you. I want to see you make yeah. a primitive this technology is funny. video. Okay, yeah. I'll do that. I'm going to make a primitive technology video. That guy's a great director. Like, he... he oh, he's extraordinarily talented. I'm not trying to down uh, primitive technology. Yeah. I, that's one of my... I love that YouTube channel. Yeah. He is amazing. Like, the stuff he does is incredible. Yeah, I'm, sure he, he I'm sure he does it multiple times to get it down. 100%. No, oh, he, yeah. I mean, like, the clips that he shows, it's a perfect, like, story that he tells, and it's very, like, difficult. Yeah. Like, But I he's not, like – I. what I'm getting at is he's not, like, pulling it up in, like, post effects and adding shit. Oh, sure. Shit. 100%. He's, he's practicing. He's making sure he gets a good final product. But I mean, like, is this the all good A-roll? There's no like spliced just, like, thing spliced into it. No, I, it's, just just all, it's just all—it's just silent. Take. Uh-huh. Yeah, or not silent, but it's like just natural sound. Yeah. Um, but I mean. So no, I'm going to make one, under- and it's going to be dope. But Sounds yeah, great. But I would I'll somehow end up it. with another business as is, is my mm-hmm. end game. If yeah. I had to start over in the nature, I'd figure out how to monetize it eventually. But the YouTube would not be the driver. It would be historical advertising. Gotcha. So when people were Look looking back, back at my table up. company, they would yeah. be like, there would be some crazy shit like in terms of some good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I but think I don't want to be near mosquitoes. The last my, thing if I'll I had say, to start mm, this over though, that's <laughs> very. That is actually something I didn't consider. That's very real. The last thing I'll say is that I think people like underestimate like the how like subjective their perception is right so like i think that like like i've, I've had conversations with my friends about like the zombie apocalypse or like if they're gonna survive oh, i'm alone. dying two days the zombie apocalypse, I, i'm gonna die quick but i think people, that's my game plan i don't want to hang around in this random nature thing i might hang around long enough to see if there's a cure but if it looks bad i'm gonna be those th- that mass of hordes in atlanta the day one yeah <laughs> like, like on the walking dead yeah great show um mm-hmm. i think people underestimate like how they actually feel and think about the world like when they're starving and like can't like <laughs> yeah. drink water and sleep in a, I mean, in a look, nice warm uh, spot <clears throat> zombie, have a zombie apocalypse yeah. right again you don't want to use guns because they create noise and sure. there's a finite amount of ammo with a zombie you need something that's very specific yeah machete so you Shovel. want no not so, a machete you got to get really close like to a, a machete yeah but you, something you want crossbow. something that is essentially a spear okay. yes and not for throwing for Jabbing, jabbing. Yeah, but that's like one at a time. You have to like take one of these mm-hmm. things and like I know. break it, it is up, one at a time. The but, but what you do is you don't hang out in the city. Now you don't go to the middle of nowhere because yeah. then there's no supplies. You go to a small rural community. Yeah, with you the live strip mall. outside of it, uh, right? Uh, so you can come in for supplies. Uh, someone who lives in but there's Woodstock, not a lot of people to turn into zombies. We're we're, we're, we're like a few towns away from and you like make sure making that this you happen. You live close enough <laughs> that you can get there either on foot on a bicycle because again you don't want to rely on cars or motorcycles because make noise and and you have to have gas yes there you go unless you have a I'm not disagreeing with you why are we talking about this okay um, and also you, I just think you a, underestimate it, how much I've thought about this it, it emphasizes a false sense of security <laughs> what having the car so um, but what I'm saying still is talking about this I would have a very good <laughs> I would have a very good plan. Yeah, good. I don't know about my execution. Okay, yeah. I don't have a plan for the world going to hell. I have a plan for my world going to hell yeah. within the same constraints we currently mm-hmm. operate under. Mm-hmm. In yep. a, we've been invaded by Martians or there's a I mean, zombie apocalypse. Yeah, I mean, if we're being I realistic. I have nothing for that. If we're being realistic, like, okay, like, I'm zeroed out. Like, my wife divorces me. Yeah. 
wants nothing to do with me. I have no money. I'm done. I'm like, I lose my house. Obviously, I'm just going to go live in my mom's basement. <laughs> like, obviously. Yeah, right? I, I can, right? I can, I can, I can post my content. comeback from my parents. <laughs> my parents have, I live in my basement. They have, they still have a room of, of like a bathroom. I, and I could probably live in my brother's basement, but my mom's basement is nicer. Yeah. And if my brother would be unbearable about it. Fantastic. If I have to, if I my brother's house, I have to babysit We're gonna shift a lot. Gears. That would be a lot of effort. We're going to shift some gears. All right. My um, parents would probably like to see me. Again, yeah. this episode <laughs> is hope. about step parents and stepchildren. <laughs> <laughs> but if one of my pa- but if my one of my parents had to remarry and I had to live with them, that would be unfortunate. Um this next question comes from avo.com. Here we go. My dad passed away last month in Indiana. Everything to my stepmom, nothing to his adult children. How can we contest dad's will? Um, Everything dad, to who? Um, Everything to, to the, the stepmom. stepmom. Okay. Let's, and also, let's pretend it's in Georgia. Um, dad married stepmom 20 years ago. Affair, in parentheses. <laughs> Very direct. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Dad, dad passed away last month in Indiana. Stepmom says, let's pretend it's in Georgia. Stepmom says, nothing is left to his adult children. Is there verbiage that needs to be in my dad's will of disinheritance of his children? If not properly worded, we are... Are we due a percentage of his estate um, in Georgia? Um, I have requested a copy of his um, will. Um, as I know, I have three months to contest it. So in this situation, oh. if, if you don't think there's a will, or if you think this is a, fa- a bad will, then mm-hmm. yes, file something you, to contest it. So yeah, but the grounds of a contest are narrow. And, and don't rely on the copy that you get mailed by the person saying this is the will. Yeah. Um, make sure you look at like what's being offered to the court. Go to the, if you can go to the courthouse and look at the physical case right. file. Yeah. Right. So um, there's there there used to be something where people would say like to my son so and so I leave one dollar. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to do that anymore. And honestly, you don't have to even disinherit someone overtly. You just have to leave everything to someone else. Right. If you just drain the estate and by giving it to other people, um, then that effectively disinherits someone. There's no there's no magic phrase you have to have in there. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't challenge the will. But that has to be on a very specific basis. Right. Can you challenge any will like that you're you if involved can, with? Yeah. You, can, you can file a challenge to any Anybody will. can mm-hmm. file anything they want in court. Particularly if you're uh, related to the person, stood to benefit mm-hmm. from the person either not having a will, like you were their child or yeah. spouse, or you stood to benefit from a previous will. Yeah. Um, but you have to allege and but you have to allege there's certain grounds. You have to allege that this will if you want to object to a will, you have to allege that it's the product of fraud, that the person didn't know what they were signing, who died, that it was product of duress potentially, that the person was pressured to sign a will, mm-hmm. that for undue influence that the stepmother may have pressured him into it. Maybe he's yep. older and not super. He might be he may, he might have had yeah. dementia for all right. I know. He might have had mm-hmm. some cognitive impairment that he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. Um and he signed the will under those regards. Um, really anything where the behavior of uh, where the will of the uh, the person benefiting from will took the place of the person signing the will. Yeah. So the stepmother is able to put her influence over it enough, then that would potentially be cause that would be caused to support a will objection. Mm-hmm. The evidence itself borne out in the trial pr- in the hearing process yeah. may determine whether it's gets thrown out or not but you have enough to at least try to to get it before a judge right so you can actually make sure like is this a valid will that does disinherit us because ultimately it elements that will not be witnessed oh sorry i'm gonna cut you off but if it's not witnessed and those other requirements of a valid will too then maybe mm-hmm. may be able to object to it and and you know and what it kind of boils down to is you know at the end of the day it, the you know it's not fair is is almost never a valid a will argument. objection gotcha yes um like there are very very specific circumstances where you can talk about like equity um but that is super super fact specific yes um and it's almost never a way to actually challenge a will just by saying it's not fair i don't like it i don't like it that's just that's never it okay so basically you can challenge any will especially if you're like involved or could stand Mm -hmm. to benefit from said situation you're related to the person or there was a previous will that you were in and now in the new one you're not in or lessened or whatever yeah um so you can go ahead and do that plus those other or if you're a creditor or if you're a creditor that's interesting too um but basically what you're doing is you're questioning the validity of the will you're not Mm -hmm. questioning like the fairness yeah. Of the will, I, you, a, a person. Yeah, most states recognize the legal principle that you can leave your estate any way you want, as long as there's a reasoning behind it. 
So I can leave it all to the circus if yep. it was a I was of sound mind and I loved the circus and everyone knew I loved the circus. Oh, it all made sense. And as long as it's not against public policy, <laughs> well, that's true. I can't illegal. leave it to support a terrorist group or something. Right. Okay. I can't um, do that without real questions. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, cool. So so dad created a will that went to the stepmom and it cut the kids out um yep. percent chance and i know obviously you're lacking so many details yeah. but like percent mm-hmm. chance of a case like that let's say it was all done fairly above board nothing too shady and the dad mm-hmm. just the wanted will it will probably be upheld the will right? yeah I, as a betting man without knowing anything else mm-hmm. if i knew the will was like for example drafted by a lawyer the stepmother yep. wasn't in the room she had no role in procuring the will at all, and the and the guy who died was of sound mind yeah. and made a reasoned decision. I will say, most of the time, I wouldn't plan to for the will to be so held yeah. up. Yeah, because I mean, I'd be surprised any other way. Because you never know why people do what they do, right? I mean, right. F- I mean we have a lot of specifics we don't have. Yeah. This guy might have, you know, this was an affair, right? So that blows up a family. He, he so liked if her his enough kids, to leave his wife, so we so know he if, likes her. And if his kids didn't react well to the affair, maybe the kids cut off ties with him, and he's decided, all right, well, you're going to cut ties with me. I'm just going to leave everything to her. But the, fa- like the that, fact that, that, that he, happens. The fact that he had an affair and married her, that would support the fact that he wanted to it, – it's a reasoned decision to leave stuff to your wife. Right, right. Particularly to your wife that you left your other wife for. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but, uh, mm-hmm. uh, but one thing I would point out, though, and this does not appear to be a case in this fact pattern, but if any of the kids are under 18, they could they, they might not be able to overturn the will, but they may be able to get part of the estate because of kids' benefit from – Right. There's a general gotcha. public policy to cut kids in. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's super interesting. Okay, cool. So if the, if the kids are under 18, then that is definitely you, – you might be in you touch can't, with you, Yeah, you can't cut off children. Cool. The kids had no role in any of this, and they – general legal principle, you have an obligation to take care of your kids. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. That was very But these all sound like adults based on the length of time. I think they are yeah. too. Um, cool. That brings us to our final question for this episode. Um, again, once more from Avo.com. I didn't include a little fun portion with me asking crazy things in this one because it seemed I don't have any step parents or stepchildren. It's my, my parents have been together for a bunch of years. I don't know how they do it. God, it's, that sucks, man. I wish was, if, if they had split, you'd have so much more content. I know, it has so much content for this episode. Oh, it, was a, it was a kid, you see your friend's parents get divorced, and they're like, my parents are competing for my affection. <laughs> and it's like, it's somebody was like, that sounds interesting, yeah. but I'm glad it's that was not the case not for me. Not a good situation. Yeah. You know? Anyway, sorry. Honestly, but no, honestly, if two people want to compete for my affection now, I'm sure my parents, whilst buried, yeah, if, they wanna, if, like, if my parents want to compete to top each other and give me <laughs> cool stuff, they're still free to do that if you want to compete for my for my affection i have an amazon wish list exactly <laughs> you are ha- i am more than happy and to i have a yeah, yeah. yeah i'm more than happy to take people's I money I, d- I was talking to my parents and i was Just observing my them once <laughs> and like, i think the reason why my parents have been able to stay married so long is that like my dad like doesn't really engage that well in arguments and like when somebody when there's like something that they really just like are fighting about my dad will just fall asleep because like he like works so hard that he's always exhausted that would just... make me so mad if someone <laughs> oh, fell asleep well, during an argument you'd think you'd think unless your like, mom's like chill with it just like i mean well after a little while she's like oh he's tired because he's working hard and okay. then like he's asleep and then it just like and it's like how they resolve conflict and it's like you know that, to that a trained a therapist, it's probably not the best way, but it it works, and they've been married for a Honestly, long time, and they genuinely love each other. There's a lot of psychology other, so. that, like, if you most conflicts, if you go blame them on a third party to do so, like yeah. make up a person and be like, Bob left the sink, the dishes in the sink again. <laughs> he didn't run the dishwasher. Bob's such a jerk. And if you can push as many things out of the way, then it it sits a lot of time. It makes yeah. people happier towards their marriage. Makes you not blame the other person. Great. Anyway, last focus question. solutions. Last question. Avo.com, since I don't have any step parents. And second. hire someone to do your dishes. That's a secret to a happy marriage. That's an interesting <laughs> take. I like that. <laughs> um, sweet. From Avo.com. Can my mom allow her boyfriend to live in her house after she passes, even though it's uh, it now in my name? I loved this question. Okay, here we go. I, I, I need, a, I need this more. This is an interesting Can my mom you, allow her boyfriend to live in her house after she passes, even though it's now in my name? My mom okay. is going to put her house legally into my name in her will after she passes away. She wants her boyfriend to be able to live in the house until he passes as well. 
I don't get along with her boyfriend and he drinks and does drugs. Will I be able to kick him out even if she puts a clause in her will stating her wish that he can live there? I don't know. Her boyfriend sounds rad. Yeah, sounds like a great <laughs> dude. Mom can pick him. <laughs> like, so the answer is yes. Cool. The answer well, is yes. Potentially. Really, depending on how she did it. Yeah. Okay. So what's the right and wrong way to do this? So the wrong way to do it would be I give my house to my child and then telling child outside of the will, you got to let him live here till he dies. Then it's all yours. <laughs> I would. That's yeah. the wrong way to do okay, it. Okay. I, gotcha. I concur. The right way to do it, if mom really wants this to happen, is you give what's called a life estate in the house to the boyfriend. And essentially what that means is the house is the boyfriend's until he dies, and then it is the child's. I would also offer a third way. The trust option. No, even a, I guess a fourth way then. Okay. <laughs> so the other option would be to, to give it um, to a trust, to have it held in trust, um, managed by the child for the benefit of the boyfriend a for trust the boyfriend's is, life. Trust just to like really lock this down. For yep. this. You could all, she trust could is any time that property is legally held by one person for the, for the benefit of, of another. another person. Yep. Like a trust fund or like a... Yep, yep. But gotcha. tr- yeah, and, there, and there's a middle, and the middle person, the trustee, manages it for... Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Um, Sweet. So the house is owned by trust. In, or it's not owned. It's, it's in it's the trust. It's functionally yes. in the trust. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. And then yeah. what happens? The daughter would get it she, she, she mean the daughter would be the trustee, pre- mm-hmm. I guess, presumably. Yep. And she would have to. The trust terms would say the dad lives there for not the dad, the boyfriend lives there for his, as long as he wants or until he dies. Okay. Yeah. And then you said there's a fourth way to do it as well. I might also create a lease agreement oh, and, okay. and bind, and give the house to the daughter either in a will or a trust, and then bind the daughter and the estate to a never-ending lease to give him a tenancy. Um. It depends on how much. Okay, all of these things are confrontational. Even with the trust um, and the whatever the will, because there's gonna be or life is a because there's always gonna be conflict with the daughter. Because mm-hmm. the boyfriend will always have the duty to the daughter to not de- destroy the house, mm-hmm. and the daughter also seems like she's of the position the house is gonna be destroyed by the boyfriend and I don't disagree with her if her facts are right so if in life would say I mean, the daughter could sue the boyfriend for depleting the property because if he brings I mean obviously all we know he likes to crack open some BLs for, and smoke some weed it's true we, we don't know what the drug is a drug could be Xanax yeah. and he could be zonked out all day and he no, does nothing know. He, 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 the drug could be like coffee. Coffee, yeah, yeah. exactly. He really so likes to get caffeinated. Maybe she is aggressively a, um, smearing off ice. Maybe, in the she's, maybe she's See, part of we, some very specific religion. Maybe she's we like mentioned a, this at the very Amish or something. <laughs> we mentioned she this. That any drug is a problem. We mentioned this at the beginning yeah. of the episode, right? right. Where. There are so many underlying issues that just rear their head on this but kind of honestly, stuff. Right. So here, I right? want to remove this dynamic is mm-hmm. not good. No. I would, I would, if I was the mom, I would figure out a way to bypass this whole situation. Get yeah. the boyfriend fucking out of the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, because I think even most things, I think the daughter, if he's destroying the house, the daughter will probably prevail in the lawsuit to mm-hmm. get him to evict him. Um, either of, as a life tenant or as a if he was actually messing up the property. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But, but I, this is a great lesson in, right, just because you don't like your step-parent or your step-sibling or whatever, it does not change the fact that, you know, the, the, the parent that you have that, that wants to do this for this person, they can do that. And, and there's often a lot – not a lot yes. you can do about it. And it's something you just need to kind of prepare yourself for. Yes. Right? We're getting this like, oh, he drinks and a- does drugs. Actually, we, we don't know. That's we've, true. We've gotten stories from clients that paint people as monsters. Yeah. And then they're not and then way. And they're not monsters. Right. And sometimes yeah. they are. Don't get me wrong. People – yeah. In but, conflict, people yeah. amp each other up. Right. Um, yeah. It's one side of a story. So that's why it's that's good true. to set things down ahead of time and make sure people know what it is. If she could figure out a way to sidetrack that dispute. If oh, no it one's attached like to that, a huge if, bummer. If no one's attached to this house, I would say sell it, yeah. allocate the money like to some some I guess majority to the daughter and the rest you got this her boyfriend set up in some apartment or something. Mm-hmm. But like you don't want to leave this thing but butting at each other for years i don't know how right. old his boyfriend is a boyfriend could be like the the mom could be like 80 they the might pool boy be could be 30 80s. 
We don't this know. This could last for. I mean, but let's say a boyfriend and a daughter are the same age. Yeah. That could oh. last forever. They might oh, be in their eighties, and the drugs might be like you know, heart medication. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the worst case scenario is that for some reason I don't think. But the, that's what it but is. the worst case scenario. We is, don't know. It's but, Avo. But, but, but the worst case scenario to me is that the boyfriend's super young because yeah. if the mom dies, yeah. and mom's older, and she dies first, and the boyfriend's just in the daughter's life forever. Yeah. yeah. That sounds awful. And I don't. What honestly, if I was in that situation, just like you know, person to person, so like, okay, my parents' young, awful boyfriend is going to inherit the house, and eventually it'll come to me. I have to like look at that house, look at how much it's worth, and decide: is it worth it for me to worry about this? True. Right. Mm-hmm. If I if I spend all my time fighting to make sure this house stays in great condition for this whole, whole life, what's my eventual payout? Right. And what's it worth? To, what's it worth to me to just essentially not not waive your right in the house? Her, but just say, you know what? If he wrecks up the property, fine. I'll do and it honestly, later. her and the That's boyfriend might get together and be like, let's just ditch this house, and or yeah, he or might he could like, buy her out or whatever it yeah. is mm-hmm. to resolve. Yeah, he might to want to move to a state where weed's legal now. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> love it. But yeah, just be as we be careful because I my own family. My, I don't care. My dad. My dad knows. My whether my grandmother died like in the seventies. My grand father married a woman who was seven years older than him she's still alive she's very nice i i she's i know my grandmother whole life but the point i mean there's there are people often marry way younger the second time because right. mm-hmm. i was an old person you might want someone who takes care of you right yeah. And also, it's nice to have someone. If, if I have, if old person has money and the other person has looks or whatever, or, right. or energy to take care of you, that's a good matchup. We call it an arrangement. If I'm rich yeah. and someone's willing to wipe the dribble off my chin, I'm willing to live with it. <laughs> Healthcare aids are expensive. Chin dribble. Getting married is a wash. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Like, Anna Nicole Smith, like that marriage, for all the things we know about it, it actually was a f- more, the guy was way more with it. Than the media portrayed, and he yeah. wanted to marry a young thing to have her around. So mm-hmm. who cares? Yep. The probate go. case yeah. was later when the stepkid, stepmother, stepkid fight that emerged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so main people takeaway, have that problem too. Main takeaway: make an estate plan and try to avoid awful nightmare situations like this. A trust would have avoided most of these stories we talked about today, right? Mm-hmm. And at least like it wouldn't be put on to these two people to like fight and sort over this, and not in like, public. Yeah. Right. And and part of it too is, you know, make the plan, make sure people know your plan. Right. So that way they can grapple with the emotions of it now. With you. Instead of trying with to fight you, it with the court. Yeah. Instead of and instead of dealing with it after you've died and they're trying to deal with everything at once. Just right. figure out what you want to do, get it Tell on the them. table now, talk about it with your loved ones. Have the awkward phone call zoom yep. beating and let's get it done with. Yeah. And most people when you explain Ooh, it to them, it makes perfect sense. Perfect for that. And if it really gets off the rails, end me. You gotta go. Sorry. <laughs> it's Uh-oh, like I'm connection you. problems. You just start like waving Bar- your hand in front of your on Barbara, your, I can't like, hear oh, you. I can't hear you. Mute, 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 the host. This is all you yeah. need to be the host of this meeting. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's talk about death and taxes. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Post a comment. Give us a like rating. And hey, if you're listening on a podcasting app, give us a five-star review and let us know your thoughts about the show. Guys, if you would like to work with us, give us a call, 404-939-7562. We'd love to help you set up an estate plan, a trust. We'd love to write you a will. If you have a probate issue, give us a call. We'll like to help you out, um, especially if you live in the Atlanta area. If you don't, give us a call anyway. We'll refer you to the right person. All my friends are Lawyers. Yeah, Steven's got a lot of friends. He likes to brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are estate planners. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool, guys. Uh, we also have a book. Um, it's the first link in the description. Uh, it's an ebook. It's free, um, and basically, it gives you a lot of information. If you're thinking about creating an estate plan, it's everything you need to know um, before creating an estate plan, so that you don't make a bunch of estate planning mistakes. It's actually called the three biggest mistakes we see when people make estate plans um that's what i think is that the done. title it's a very long title it's not a title you want to like read out loud necessarily right it's but more it, descriptive and but it gets across what it is and that's exactly right guys yeah. thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this have a great day Bye.